Well, today's been some good foundation laid for um, some audacious plans. Uh, well, not really too audacious, actually. Um, all I'm trying to do right now is pre-compute all of the voxels um, that are that will be shaded and pre-compute all the voxels that will be highlighted and also mark all the voxels that need to be that will cast shadows. Um, right now I've got shadows turned off um, so the player and the skybot are not casting any any shadows um, but you can see that this pillar right here in front of the player is half way in shadow and if as I twist the camera around it stay, you know, that part of it that's that's in shadow from the the main um, uh, directional light is always staying in shadow, right? It's, so it's it's rotated. It knows which it knows which voxels are in the shade, um, and so this is a pretty huge step towards having what I'm trying to accomplish finished and and accomplished. Um, but there's a bit there's an issue. Um, for example. It shouldn't be that the that this this pillar at this angle is exactly half dark and half highlighted. Like that's that's wrong. The top of this thing should all be highlighted. So something's going wrong there with the the, the ray casting. Um, and also there's another problem with um, the player. So the player is a rotatable voxel model, and um, it uses a, a shortcut. Um, of, you know, if the camera's at a certain rotation and the player's at another rotation, um, then it uses, it basically just does some, it uses the model depending on the camera, the camera's rotation as well. So basically what's going on here is, is this might be, uh, it might look right here while we're, we've got a camera rotation of zero, but as soon as we have a camera rotation now of 45, it's not accurate anymore. See, players, like at this angle right here, the player's left half should be highlighted. That one works, this one doesn't. See what I'm saying? So basically there's some, some accuracy going on and all this is, uh, is it's kind of a delicate balance because there's, there's a lot of steps to loading a model now at this point. Um, the model has to be rotated, the model has to be occluded, the model has to be projected, the model has to be bit volumed to do this whole um, pre-shading technique and so there's a lot of steps and it's kind of complicated to get it all right so today's been just this laying down the foundation and uh, this is actually quite a, quite a lot of success already getting just this bits done so far um, I'm not sure also why this big cube here in the middle doesn't accurately like at this angle right here why is is ha why are there so many why are there bands of highlights See how it's sort of like highlighted in the middle, and it's highlighted on the right, and it's highlighted on the left, but in the in these two sh strips here in the middle, it's like dark. So this, there's got to be something going wrong with all this. Let's look at some code, though. Um, let's check it out here in source tree rather than Vim, because we can just go look at all today's check-ins. Um, Basically, there's a bit volume class I created. Let's okay, we can we can show this one in Vim. Bit volume is basically just um, a a structure which represents a bunch of unit sixty fours. And so for every point in a volume, you can set a zero or a one. And in this case, the model is using this to de de to determine solidity, right? So we can we can store a ton of data. In you know like 64 different bits of data all in one um, you know 64 bit integer so we can really compress down the size of something using just this one bit technique um, so you can set points in the volume or check if it has points in the volume or see if a point is within the volume and uh, that class is kind of the foundation um, and then Gosh, oh yeah, I went through a bunch of things today where like I even realized that I was rotating this entire time. This this whole this engine's been around now for like over 6 months and more like 9 and the whole time I was rotating voxels by truncating rather than rounding. So like -2.1 would have become -2 
but you know negative 2.5 i don't know how exactly it works with the truncation versus rounding but rounding's more accurate so this is just this is this little simplification right here is way more accuracy for the rotation and um and then also this was huge i never knew that my i thought voxel occlusion was working really well right like it was perfect but i noticed today while stepping through and trying to figure out all this shading stuff that some of the voxels weren't getting occluded because they were exact duplicates. So this was before I got the rotational accuracy working, but back then, um, some of these voxels would turn out to be the exact same point after rotating, and then this, and then they wouldn't get occluded. So look at the, this is actually a huge optimization. Look at this originally. This is the original one. Yeah, I think uh, this is. Oh gosh. Yeah, okay, this is the original. Here's a kind of a good example. Let's look at this one right here, the first couple of ground Bs. Right, you can see that before, there was like a couple of these that were like 900 voxels, and now there's 700 voxels. It's not that many more voxels, but gosh, you throw that into runtime when you're trying to render tons of voxels, that's a big difference. And you can, it's noticeable in the game, which is a, a huge win, um, but a divergent tangent. So anyways, that was a good fix. Um, and then what else did we have, we do today that was kind of important? I, I mean, just getting the bit volume to even work was kind of a lot of, uh, you know, it was delicate work. Because I didn't have, uh, in the end, what really fixed the bit volume and made it really awesome. It, I was having tons of problems getting the positions within the volume to work right because all of the models have an anchor point and they also have an offset. And I was like, okay, wait, do I do I um, create the bit volume before I do the offset, after I do the offset and the anchoring? And I finally figured it all out. That basically, the, the simplest way to do it is to make the bit volume have a lower left or a minimum point and just add that or subtract that from every single point when you're trying to get it from the bit volume so it's basically just got a, an offset and a size now which simplifies it a lot um is there anything else that was important today i mean that was pretty important too i realized today that <laughs> models weren't even rotating so Maybe if you saw me rotating the camera before, let's run the game real real quick again. Um, like the last video or two, I made some. Actually, it was the very just the last video compared to this one. Um, I made some optimizations that made rotating super fast, and now this is like super fast. But if you notice in those videos, this is kind of easy to see for something like this thing floating out here in the sky, right? If you look at that old video and I, when I rotated. That thing wouldn't even wasn't even rotating, right? And actually, tons of things weren't rotating. Like these pillars weren't even rotating. I'm pretty sure the ground wasn't even rotating. Nothing was really rotating if it unless it had a rotate flag, which is something like the player, which can move, or the skybot, which can move. Those things had the rotate flag, so they were rotating. But those things weren't. But now it's rotating because simply everything in the refresh model needed to have a rotational Z. Instead of the rod Z being zero, it actually rotates based on the camera. So, oh yeah, this was kind of that that little topic right there. This commit, um, yeah. So that's basically it. I covered everything about the bit volume already. So, yeah, there you have it. Some foundational work to get some pre-calculated shading going on. Some work left to do, probably at least a day, but this will be a a pretty big thing for the engine because I'll be able to shade lots of things that were just way too expensive to shade before. Like, for example, all of these pillar objects in the ground and um, background objects and things like that. Those were really expensive to shade because you had to cast vox cast shadows at runtime, and that's just um. That's slow. So being able to do this when you're actually loading the model and you're rotating the model and pre, you know, I'm already pre-rotating all the models and all that kind of stuff. So why not also pre-shade all the models? 
So this will become a cool step because it will make the engine look cool, like the whole game will look cooler and it will also run faster than trying to do all those shadow casts at runtime. So hopefully it's a win in both the aesthetic as well as the pragmatic. Thanks for watching this video.